love you. dogs. We love dogs sometimes more than anything. Nope. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. Ooh, okay, come on, let's go for a walk. Last week, we left the beautiful Sequoia National Park, which was part three of our mini California series. We had an amazing trip cruising up the southern coast, visiting friends, camping along the ocean, and seeing the largest trees on our planet, and even did our own Rails to Trails ride. So we're gonna go to San Diego and then we're gonna ride back. We're gonna ride back. That's fantastic. Yeah. But there was a mission to this trip, and that was to drop off our 2017 Flying Cloud 30-foot bunkhouse to Vinny's North Bay Airstream Repair in Sacramento. If you own an Airstream, you likely know who Vinny is. Some of us call him the Airstream Whisperer. This is all talking to you. Yeah. When you start losing these rivets here, it's starting to tell a story. He has a new facility on an old military base, which is very secure, but we found a way to penetrate it. Going to Vinny's towing an Airstream is kind of like that meme where you can get into anywhere as long as you carry a ladder. <laughs> Have you seen that? <laughs> this is a big commitment. It's a bigger <laughs> commitment than a ladder. We're here to get our Airstream back to 100% like we do each year. 2023 was another major year of travel, going across the country twice and spending most of the summer in the beautiful Nova Scotia. But harsh roads can take a toll on an RV. Whoa! Good I'm call. saying, I'm saying. Thank you for reminding me of the most treacherous speed bumps in all of North America. Okay. okay we're gonna stop. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I have to, the bikes in the back. You're welcome. Thank you, Dad. Okay, thanks, Dad. Okay. We have a long list of little repairs and one major one. Our flying cloud has what's called front end separation, and it's at the point where it must be repaired. In this video, you'll learn what it is, what causes it, and how to correct it. At least, Vinny's correction. And we're not going to cut this video down to make it short. We feel that those that are interested in this topic want to hear everything Vinny has to say about it. But first, let's take a look around Vinny's new facility. Yeah, this is all, all Airstream repair. These are all clients in for service. Okay. As we step into the back of the building. So this is our master applied coatings division. So we have this uh, here and we have it in, uh, in Tallahassee, Florida. I met uh, some very good friends of ours. We met in Palm Springs on the way up here and I oh. said, wow, does that Airstream look good? He says, well, I we took it to, to Vinny in Tallahassee and yeah. it's been ceramic coated. It looked fantastic. Yeah, it's the real deal. We yeah. spend a lot for that coating. It's made right here in the U.S. We have two of the top chemists. We can make changes on the fly with the formula, and you just can't do that with the stuff that everybody else is using. Yeah. So we're, we're pretty proud of it. Yeah, it looked good. You may have heard of Ivan the Great. Mm. It's a name I dubbed yep. him just to embarrass him. Yep. But he's a great guy. He's very talented, and any maybe little dents that you have on your current unit, oh, really? we can pull those out as well. No way. This one has hail damage. You know, minor, but otherwise you'd have to replace all those panels to make really? that right. No way. That'll all just come right out. All these. All that he stuff. He uses a method and he will remove them to where you have to kind of go like this and you will probably not find it. New cabinet facility. Oh yeah, I've been seeing that online. Yeah. All the interior work, which I didn't think you did. Is that, are you doing interior work now because of the we new facility? Do, we'll do interior work. Wow. So we'll do modifications. We'll do uh, twin bed conversions. We'll do, uh, you know, rear lounges, mm -hmm. the bars, whatever a client oh, yeah. wants, uh, yeah. Doug can do. This is what our flying cloud looks like now after Vinny's correction, but that's not what it looked like before. deflection in the tongue as well. Could that was hard to see the... in the LCD screen, Yeah. but I saw the shell Move. doing a kind of a boogie. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine what it's like on the highway. Oh. That's it, just me. You can see the need for so, some more additional support in this area. Yeah. After watching how much movement is evident just by, you know, shaking the frame. We've lost, these are all, this is all talking to you. Yeah. When you start losing these rivets here, it's starting to tell a story. Yeah. Uh, and this crack, you can see where the line was, where the sealant is here and the sealant is here. The panels actually slipped upwards. There's, there's something going on here and we won't know the whole story until we pull the front skin off. And, uh, and we will. Oh, interesting. 
Did somebody already try to do something here? This may be the worst side. Oh wow. So you see the separation from, from yeah. this extrusion rail? Yeah. This doesn't mean you have front end separation. When folks have this extrusion rail uh, separated like this and the screws are, are backing out and you can see the bright chrome trim kind mm -hmm. of being pushed out mm -hmm. along, this doesn't mean uh, we have a death sentence going on. This just means uh, it's gonna need some attention. Why is this happening? Is it mm -hmm. over rigged? What's going on here? Uh, but this, once you put this big compartment in here, you don't have the support. This is the area that's always typically affected. But you know, we have separation right here where this trim piece is. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's lots to address. But you can see where the line originally was. This whole panel is shifted up. This panel is screwed oh, in yeah. place. So I mean, there's, and they're at two different heights. Heights. You can see where the sealant was here, and the sealant's almost a quarter of an inch higher. Wow. So we'll want to look beyond here when we get these segment guards off and see what might be happening because the trailer is supported by the frame yeah. and outriggers. So this this uh, C channel that that goes around the wood mm -hmm. and and uh, allows the the ribs to to rivet onto something and the skins to attach to mm -hmm. this whole thing was married to the frame but because the frame is narrower than the coach uh certainly here in the in in, in as it enters uh, into this area uh there's outriggers and supports that mm -hmm. hold the whole shell on so if you have this kind of stuff going on it might not just be here it might be the first outrigger mm. and the second mm. outrigger and the third could yeah. be cracked because mm. it's all working together or trying to oh my gosh it's like the front bulkhead is holding the whole thing together i think there's a country song about that <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is our rig is the poster child of front end separation no it's not the poster child <laughs> okay. but but she's talking to us all right <laughs> i need to correct it things that Airstream cannot control. They cannot control that you have a two inch receiver on the back of this trailer. <laughs> it didn't come with it. They can't control that. They can't control that you drag the back frame on every driveway to all your favorite places. Mm -hmm. They can't control that you bottom out on your battery box on your driveway going home. So it's every like, time it's like Columbo in, over here, out. Trish, <laughs> right? Yep. They can't control that. Um, what if you were to, because you have a great idea and you've seen it on the internet, mm -hmm. the internet's always right. Oh yeah. What if you were to add those little steel wheels? Yeah, I've seen them right here. Yeah. Well, what's going to happen? because I've got the two inch lift. I wish I had a three inch lift, but I have a two inch lift. Right. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be even lower on those, on hitting, on, on basically lifting your frame. You lost ground clearance. Yeah, yeah. But you have the wheel. Mm -hmm. So who cares, Yeah. right? Well, let me show you an example of why you don't want that. Do you see this deflection here in the rear panel? Yep. This frame will deflect upwards because it's not designed to carry the weight of the whole trailer where it almost wants to lift that tire off the ground. So there's a C channel in here. Yeah. You've got this panel. Boom. Oh, that means this frame pressed this molding, all the screws, and went up to maybe about there mm -hmm. and then came back down. Yeah. So if you were to do that every time with the little wheels that you put in the back, mm. thinking, well, I don't want to drag. Yeah. Um, you just caused harm to the trailer yeah. or potentially will. And if those wheels take up a couple inches, you're increasing the odds of it happening yep. by anything that would have cleared by those two inches. Exactly. Then he brought his dump trailer to the shop to show us the comparison of frame construction. The trailer has an 8-inch I-beam with a 16-foot box with a load rating of 14,000 pounds but the frame is rated for 29,000 pounds. It's overbuilt. Yeah. And you know why they did it, because there's so many uncontrollables in here. 
Somebody's gonna fill this with gravel. They're gonna oh, yeah. fill it with steel. They're yeah. gonna put a bobcat in it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna do all the things they're gonna do with this trailer. Well, look, look at what they're gonna do even in the picture. I mean, you know, somebody's gonna try to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell, people, tell people, no, don't do that. At 29,000 pounds on something that's clearly overbuilt, it's probably pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't install this kind of frame on an Airstream, right? It's gonna add a lot of additional weight to the trailer. Which means it's gonna require a bigger tow vehicle. And Maybe. it's gonna get it's gonna yeah. get less fuel fuel mile sure. or fuel All economy, right? And those are the things that the manufacturer's thinking about. The manufacturer could do this. Yeah. They could put this I beam. I've seen it on other trailers on sure. big, you know, park models mm -hmm. and all that. But uh, not necessary for an airstream. Yeah. But if they use this frame, we'd probably have to pick a new topic. Mm hmm There'd be no front end separation. Yeah. So what do we do? We have what we have. Mm -hmm. Um we have to mitigate it. We have to explain why this is happening and let clients make their own choice. I have a great demonstration right there. That ace wheelbarrow. Uh, we have the ability for payload. Uh, we have uh, the front tire of your truck is there. Uh -huh. We have the rear tires of your truck here. Let's just call these the weight distribution bars. Okay. They look and like them. They kind of do. And my feet are, are what? It'd be the um, trailer. Would be the trailer. Yeah. So, uh, for demonstration purposes, it kind of gives you an idea what the trailer goes through. Mm -hmm. If you pick up this wheelbarrow, it weighs nothing. Yeah. So, I doubt it adds much weight at all to my feet, mm -hmm. but something. But let's say this truck, as soon as we put some tongue weight on it, and then we take all our favorite gear, mm -hmm. that slide out rack, our generators, <laughs> all that stuff that Easy we now. have to Easy have. now. All that stuff we <laughs> have to have, uh, it all adds weight. Yeah. So say it's, say it's a 1500, you know, mm -hmm. model truck, fairly light suspension, maybe even coil springs. Mm -hmm. If you add tongue weight to the tow hitch on that vehicle, it's gonna squat. So what are we gonna to wanna to do? We're gonna to wanna to pull it up yep. with our weight bars. If we fill this wheelbarrow with gravel, oh, it would hurt my back and everything, mm -hmm. but I could do it, I could lift it. Mm -hmm. You can't see it, right? The, the trailer's level, the truck is level, the bars have a bend in them. You really can't see what might be going on. Mm -hmm. We could have added 800 pounds to the trailer. Like your favorite rock collection, yeah. or all the things you know you can't pack in there, we just did it inadvertently because we over-rigged the trailer. Now, if we have this frame and we pull down with a weight distribution in this area, pull these bars up to this level, where does that pressure go to lift that truck? To the front tires, right? Right. Then to move to the front of the truck. Isn't that what weight distributions are designed to do is, yeah. is transfer the weight from the trailer to the front of the truck the tow vehicle and to the back tires of the truck and to the back tires to spread out the weight over the whole unit and where's the connection between the truck and the trailer right here at the ball okay so all that force is right here gotcha now with this frame we're probably not going to see any deflection but our current frame on the airstream depending on how much we ask of it mm -hmm. is going to get some deflection yep and that's why we're talking about the damage to the front gotcha. of the shell. All right, so that's the explanation of what front end separation is, what causes it, what are some contributing factors to it, uh, what's happening with the weight distribution as, as it's putting pressure on things. Of course, the things that the end user does to cause it with drag and bumper and all that type of stuff. And there could be some consequences to that as it relates to the frame. So now, the second part of this is we're gonna disconnect, we're gonna bring the trailer into Vinny's shop, his team's gonna start tearing everything apart, and then tomorrow morning they're gonna start welding some things together so we can chat about what to do about this. Nice. We're gonna remove this front compartment, mm -hmm. the front compartment frame. Okay. So we're gonna <clears throat> remove both of the segment protectors. We're gonna remove the 
upper and lower extrusion rails. Okay. And then once we get these up and we'll see what's going on there. Okay. We're gonna just see, we're gonna see everything. You can see what's happening here. Okay, so it's actually <clears throat> taken the skin of this front panel and it's pulled the C-channel below it and pushed the skin on the other side. Yeah. This one. That's what we're after. Mmm. This is the front of the skin. Yeah. This is the support that we're gonna hold this rail, this rib, together to the frame. And then we're going to bolt this piece down so that it goes through the frame and through this big header. On the outside? All the way across. No. On the inside. Inside, you won't even see it. Oh, I got you. So now you've got that, all of that supported that used to depend on the C-channel, which is kind of moving around a little bit. Yeah. Because it's aluminum. Yeah. So we're just gonna make it more rigid and give ourselves something to weld into. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So not only is that gonna be something that we're gonna be able to attach a skin to, it's gonna give strength to the C-channel and a place to weld to steel and tie it all in together. So rather than these supports in here, just kind of pivoting on the frame, mm -hmm. now it's welded in place gotcha. to, a, to, a, to a threshold plate that's angled, so it's really strong. I'm not entirely sure what you just did. So did you kind of, would you get a jack in the back and then just like take the toupee and go like this? <laughs> Wow! Huh? Is that uh, what you, that's what yeah, it looked like. Yeah, you have a clear understanding. <laughs> we don't want to overcompensate, but we kind of want to get things to line up where they should be. Because you see what's happening here. So before we do that, I'm going to let it go. I want you guys to pull these out. Put these on the right side. So there was a rivet there at one point, and this is how much the skin and the shell was moving. That's a half inch almost, yeah. would you say? Mm-hmm. So it just completely wore a path hey, 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 as the shell is moving, uh, as the frame is porpoising, going down the road. Okay, can you do one bounce? One bounce. Yep. Okay, never mind. A couple bounces. Okay, good. That gives you an idea of what we're going to do. We're going to tie it into this cross member. Okay. We're going to tie it into the frame, and we're going to go beyond and bolt it over here. And then we're going to weld in mm -hmm. this piece. And that's going to be on on your side, but the notch will be a little bit different. We're going to weld it right to this bolted, so we've got that strength in that in that upper uh, rib, and it's tied all the way across to this lower rail, and it makes it really rigid and quite strong. And I think that's the solution. And as you, we've confirmed, the outriggers, so to speak, are okay. They're okay. So we only have to do the front. Your outriggers are okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah, we'll probably add some additional bracing mm -hmm. <clears throat> under here, but uh, yeah, it's in good shape. So we've taken a piece of 10 gauge and we put the proper angle on it to follow the line of the, the front of the skin, all these ribs and we've drilled holes in different areas so that we can tie into the frame. We can go through this cross member, one, two, three, with bolts in place at the plates. And then we'll tie into our brackets where we can bolt through and weld it. So this whole thing becomes a truss, all works together to support the shell, and tie it into the frame. Rather than having all of this stress in one location, as the trailer moves, we distribute all of that through this channel. Kind of treat each trailer individually. There's not a cookie cutter approach to this. Mm -hmm. We really need to look and see what the trailer needs, mm -hmm. assess it, and then and then build it. Well, which is what you did with, with, with mine. You We pulled some things apart, you looked at the outriggers, yeah. you realized it didn't need support there. Right. It needs a lot of support in some other places. It does, yeah. So you've created a, a, you've created a, a template that you can modify to the yeah. rig and yeah. then weld it per each design. Yep, exactly. 
Yeah, some we have to go further and deal with all the the um, outriggers. Mm -hmm. In your case, all the outriggers were in good shape, no yep. cracks. Mm -hmm. But it all depends. We might have to go deeper on the sides. Sure. And whatever it needs, mm -hmm. it's going to get. We recorded the most critical parts, tearing apart the front end and rebuilding it, but we left our Airstream for Vinny and his team to finish, plus a lot of other repairs that we'll share with you soon. Ah, oh, that looks fantastic. Yeah, so just kind of shake. So you made cap. a shim, but then but then yeah. you, you then you veneered it to match yeah. the rest of the veneer, yeah. and then you notched it out at the bottom. Yeah, I notched the bottom because that was bugging me. I was like, oh, that's going to look funky, that gap. Yeah. Tight on the top. Yeah. And loose on the bottom. So when you slide it in there, then kind of... Look at that push it together, you can see it kind of hides the gap. Oh yeah. One of Vinny's suggestions to help mitigate the front end separation and smooth out the ride is an air safe hitch. When we picked up our Airstream, we installed the air safe hitch along with an equalizer weight distribution hitch. Oh. oh. All right, yeah. that's the sweet sound, right? <laughs> I've installed a lot of the equalizers yeah. and this is just the, you know, kind of the standard setup. Okay. And most people will come in with this arrangement, with the bars being level. Oh wow! I'm just going for fun, and then we'll yeah, go just right. to show. Yeah. Look about right. Level. Uh, a little lower. Yeah, now it's level. So right now I got the GoPro connected to the curbside of the truck on the bumper, pointing at the. Air safe hitch and at the front end of the Airstream to get kind of a comparison of what it was doing prior and what it's doing now with the front end separation correction. And uh, you know, from the inside of the cap, it all feels great. Um, the Air Safe is providing a little more cushion. I can tell when you hit those expansion joints, bridges, railroad track, railroad tracks, things like that. I can tell that it's mitigating the uh, bumpiness in the truck. And I can only imagine then or trust that it's doing the same for the trailer. So it's providing a little bit, uh, we're kind of rounding out those big bumps, which of course is what Vinny, is why Vinny's on board with AirSafe, because it's preserving, you know, the trailer, the frame. Okay, I've made it back to Arizona and I wanted to share some final thoughts now that I've had a couple days to kind of digest everything that I learned from Vinny. The first is, not all Airstreams are susceptible to front end separation. There are certain models that might be even more susceptible, such as our 30 foot flying cloud, not only just because of the length, but because we have that large storage compartment in the front. And if you go look at your Airstream and you see that like your lower belting has a little bit of a gap there. That doesn't mean that you have front end separation. As Vinny says, let the rivets tell the story. Take a look at your rivets and see if they're being stretched or if they're missing altogether. Now, when it comes to Vinny and his shop, I really like the way that he did the repair and I'd recommend his shop to anybody. I also wanna be transparent that Vinny didn't charge us to do the front end separation, but we had a lot of repairs that we did actually pay for. Hey, you know what, Vinny, really, you've done such a great job, just keep that. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just keep it, yeah. Just keep it. You've done great. Well, that's the least we can do. And you'll see. It was the least we could do. <laughs> and the same is true for Air Safe Hitch. Air Safe Hitch provided that hitch so that I could experience and I could test it, but I only drove 800 miles. And I did tell during that the trip from Sacramento to Arizona that it did smooth out the bumps in the road, but it's not like I have enough experience to personally endorse it. With that being said, that is the hitch that Vinny has on his trailer, and he has seen that that, that particular hitch does mitigate issues with front end separation. But I just want to be transparent with our relationship with Vinny and air safe hitch, just so you know that we're coming where we're coming from. But I will say, it says a lot that a shop will let me record. If you recall, way back when I installed, I went to a shop where I asked if I could record the installation of some Firestone airbags, and they said, no, we don't have the insurance or liability for that. And I'm like, okay. And they installed them upside down. And then Taps Auto out of Paso Robles corrected it for me, and I said, can I record? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. I have learned over the years that any shop that allows me to record typically is very transparent, 
they do things correctly and they have nothing to hide. So it says a lot that Vinny says, yeah, come on in. I'm gonna show you everything about how we do things. So he's really a class act when it comes to repairs. I would have no hesitation anywhere from the community uh, going to Vinny for that repair. Now, Vinny does the front end separation repair at his shop in Sacramento, but he's got another location in Tallahassee that does the, the coatings and, and some other repairs, so keep that in mind. Other than that, there's just one more episode in our mini California series as Trish and I uh, make our way back to Arizona the last time, and we actually uh, swing through Visalia, California, and, well, we're just gonna have to share it with you next weekend because uh, we have a bit of a surprise. It surprised us, at least. This all happened kind of sudden. <laughs> I hope this video was helpful to you. We'll include links for everything down below. If you have any questions, of course, reach out to us and um, we'll catch you next Sunday. Thanks for being here. Vinny, catch you later, bro. All right, you're welcome. Best thing Trish got this for Vinny. For how great of a job he's done. It's a flamingo necklace that lights up. Let's go give it to him. Hey, there's still one more thing that UPS is supposed to deliver for you, but, but Trish got you this. That's what came? No. <laughs> No, the hitch came. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, don't look That's so awesome. disappointed. Oh, thank you, Trish. <laughs> <laughs> I would the KYD trailer down. <laughs> Slow smoke. Okay. Oh, you want to do that part? Oh, you want me to hold it? Well, I was going to give you the easy part. I can hold it. You can, oh, do, right. the, you can do the holding part. Remember what happened last time? Yes. Yeah. Don't. Almost Nothing happened finger. last time. <laughs> okay, the top of the ball will be 21 and a half. So bring it down. 320. Oh, man, it's a big one. Yeah. You need you you you, you want to hold the camera? <laughs> I might need you. I might need your help. I'm not the fitness guy like you. Yeah. Right. There you go. Okay. Next. Oh my gosh. Let's see if I can get it up. <laughs> <laughs>